Hello, I'm Dr. Philip Sloan, a professor in the Department of Family Medicine at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. This brief instructional module presents a simple, evidence-based approach for screening for cognitive impairment and dementia in primary care. It's well acknowledged that early dementia is often missed by medical providers, sometimes for years. Screening would increase this early identification. The question is whether it's worth doing. According to a March 2014 recommendation of the United States Preventive Services Task Force, the current evidence is insufficient to assess the balance of benefits and harms of screening for cognitive impairment. However, the USPTF went on to say that clinicians should remain alert to early signs or symptoms of cognitive impairment, for example, problems with memory or language, and evaluate as appropriate. The task force cited several downsides to screening. A false positive could lead to anxiety and also potentially to labeling or stigmatizing. They cited the side effects of cholinesterase inhibitors, most commonly abdominal discomfort, if physicians treated people who didn't have dementia. They also cited the costs of screening, with a mini mental state examination, which takes about 10 minutes and is not free. However, as you will learn in this module, the mini mental state is a poor screening tool and not one we re recommend for primary care. What are the other sides of the argument? Are there any compelling reasons to diagnose dementia early? Well, several decades ago, the Alzheimer's Association held a series of town meetings across the nation for people who had been diagnosed with early dementia. They asked them if they thought it was a good idea or a bad thing to have been diagnosed early. The group overwhelmingly said it was a blessing. They talked about being able to deal with a diagnosis when they still had most of their faculties, could live life to the fullest, make financial plans, resolve family issues, and do advanced care planning. They and their families said it was easier on the family. Having someone behaving differently and not knowing what's going on created conflict. Knowing clarifies what is happening. They also appreciated the opportunity to begin treatment early and enroll in clinical trials. A final reason is that people with early undetected cognitive impairment often have judgment problems and so are susceptible to exploitation. Early detection can help put measures in place to keep someone from doing things like spending out their retirement savings on fraudulent products or scams. So what's reasonable in primary care? The best approach, we believe, is a middle ground in which every primary care practice has two simple tools, each of which takes three minutes and can be conducted by office staff. One is a brief focused history from a family member, the AD8. The other is a very brief cognitive screen involving three questions. It's called a mini-cog. Both are fast, simple, evidence-based, and extremely reliable in terms of sensitivity and specificity. Taken together, they perform much better than the mini-mental state, which was designed to pick up mid-stage dementia, but is less good for mild cognitive impairment and early dementia. The AD8 consists of a one-page questionnaire for a family caregiver to complete. It takes less than three minutes. Its eight questions were developed by studying thousands of patients referred to Alzheimer's disease research centers for evaluation of possible dementia. The questions cover a range of cognitive functions. Examples are less interest in hobbies and activities, repeating the same things over and over, and trouble learning to use a new tool, appliance, or gadget. For each question, the caregiver is asked whether there has been a change in the last couple of years that might be due to memory or thinking problems. If a change is reported in two or more areas, it's a positive screen. While the family caregiver completes the AD8, a staff member can take the patient aside and administer the mini-cog. It also takes about three minutes. The mini-cog was developed as a brief test to identify cognitive impairment in a community sample of culturally, linguistically, and educationally diverse older adults. It has a sensitivity of 99% and a specificity of 93% in detecting older adults with dementia and has been proven to be better than physicians or the mini mental state examination at identifying early dementia. Here's how it's done. First, explain that you are going to ask a couple of questions to check their memory. If they say it's okay, then tell the patient you want them to remember three words. For example, the three words could be apple, table, and penny. The words can be said several times if needed to provide a good opportunity for the person to get them into their short-term memory. Next, give the person a piece of paper with a large circle on it 
and a pen or pencil. Say, pretend that this circle is a clock. Put the numbers in where they go and make the hand say 10 after 11 or some other time. After the patient has completed the clock, ask them what the three words were that you'd ask them to remember. If they don't recall any, they fail the test. It's a positive screen and they need more evaluation. If they remembered all three words, it's a negative screen. If they remember one or two words, then you are in a gray zone and you have to look at the clock. If it's inaccurately drawn, the person fails a test and they have screened positive and need more evaluation. If the clock is decent, they pass the test. Now that we have two simple, reliable screening tools, when should we use them? We recommend using them together because they complement each other by testing different cognitive areas, thereby increasing sensitivity without reducing specificity. That's because the AD8 covers judgment and behavior, whereas a Minicog focuses on memory and praxis. We recommend using them in two situations. One is anyone age 75 and older who comes in for a general checkup. This age group has a high incidence of dementia and so should be screened annually. The other group is people you get suspicious about because of something you saw in the interview or exam or because a family member asked you to check the person's memory. We recommend that all medical offices serving older persons have a cognitive screening protocol in place using the AD8 and the Minicog. So when one of these situations arises, you can arrange for a person to be immediately screened while you answer phone calls, do charting, or see another patient. If both the AD8 and the Minicog are negative, then all you need to do is provide reassurance. If either is positive, then you'll need to work the patient up further with a separate appointment for a full cognitive evaluation. Our next module will talk about how to work up a positive screen. To sum it all up, we recommend that primary care offices set up a system whereby office staff can screen for dementia using the AD8 caregiver questionnaire and the Minicog interview. Using the two tests together increases sensitivity while not compromising specificity. We recommend screening annually all patients aged 75 and older who present for a general checkup, plus any patient where something triggers a concern that they might have a memory or judgment problem. One-page versions of the AD8 and Minicog are available for download from this website. Thank you for watching.